and has really good temperature monitoring. Let's start with the... Mm -hmm. Welcome to Get Tech, where I'm about to blow your mind with some cold, hard reporting. My name is Elizabeth, and on today's episode, we're going to deep dive into three popular Raspberry Pi models. Let the reporting begin. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel because we're awesome and you're awesome. So let's be awesome together. Last November, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced the release of their newest edition of the Raspberry Pi, the Model 3 A+. Raspberry Pi has more models than the Fire Festival Instagram trailer, except these won't leave you stranded on an island. With so many different models, you may be asking yourself, which one is right for me? What's the differences between them all? Which one should I buy? We're here to help you figure that out. So let's get started. First one I want to talk about today is the Raspberry Pi Model 3 A+, since it's the newest. It's the successor to the very popular Model 3 B+. So compared to the B+, it has half the memory, a quarter of the USB ports, no power over an ethernet, but it is half the size. It has the same quad core processor as the B+, but the B+, will run you around $35, or the A plus is $10 cheaper at 25. Now I wanna talk about the Pi Zero W. It has the same memory as the A plus, but a single core processor instead of a quad core. It doesn't have your typical USB ports or the power over ethernet. Really, it's pretty small. There's not much going on here, but it's powerful. Small but mighty. The Pi Zero W will run you about $10, but on every website we check, we found that there was a purchase limit of one. Now I don't know if that's due to limited production or availability, but that can be a constraint when trying to buy it. It may not have a quad core, but it's still hard core. Now that you know a little bit more about all these pies, let's get them started up. They're already preloaded with Raspbian, but let's boot them up and see how long it takes. We're finally up and running. So what we're seeing here is that the A plus and B plus took around 30 seconds to start up, while the zero took around 45. So this may be an issue for you depending on how you plan to use the Pi. What I have created is a dashboard where we can view the CPU temperatures and the CPU usage on all three of the Pis. The data is streaming into a single dashboard on initial state using the Pi help tutorial that we have a link to in the description of the video. We're gonna run a stress test on each Pi so we can compare CPU usage and temperatures to see how they each do under stress. We'll do this test with a GUI attached and with no GUI attached because what we found is that the Pi Zero runs at 100% CPU usage with the GUI attached no matter what, so yikes. On the A plus and the B plus, I'm going to run stress dash dash CPU four, since they have quad core processors. On the zero, I'll run stress dash dash CPU one for the single core processor. That way we can compare all pies evenly. One thing I do wanna mention is that I noticed while loading the packages to run the Pi Health dashboard on each of these pies, it took a little longer for each package to load on the zero versus the model threes. This is likely due to it having a single core processor compared to the quad four on the model threes. So it's generally gonna run a little bit slower. Let's start with the GUI attached. So when we run the stress test, we see that all of the CPU usage goes to 100%, but make sure to note that that Pi Zero started at 100%. Now we'll watch as the temperatures rise on each of the Pi models. One thing that I had seen people be concerned about is the CPU temperature on the Model A+, since it is smaller than the B+. Pi made mention of this in their blog post when they announced the A plus release, saying that they had done some things to have better temperature management on the Model A plus. And we see that that holds true. The A plus generally runs a little bit cooler than the B plus. Now let's see the same stress test without the GUI attached. This test looks similar on each Pi, with 163 degrees for the B plus and 160 for the A plus. Pi Zero ran at 123 degrees, but it had 30 to 
CPU usage when the stress test isn't running, which is much better than what we saw before. Now that we've looked at CPU usage and temperatures, let's check out power consumption. How we're gonna track this is we're gonna use smart outlets and the initial state SmartThings integration. We plug each of the pies into a smart outlet and stream that data to initial state so we could see how much power it was using. We did six different tests, which was HDMI, no HDMI, GUI, no GUI, stress, no stress. And so let's check those out. The B plus was constantly pulling the most power, then the A plus, and the zero pulling the least. The zero's power consumption only varied slightly, even when under stress, running 1.2 to 1.5 watts. The B plus ran anywhere from 3.5 to 5.7, while the A plus was two to four watts. This can become something that makes a big difference when deciding which Pi you wanna use, especially if you're running more than one. Power consumption can be important, especially if you plan on powering these with batteries. Even the Pi Zero when attached to a battery will only last a few days, and that's while idling. If you're planning on using battery power, Zigbee or Z-Wave devices might be a better option for you. If you plan on powering your Pi through solar power, it becomes vitally important to make sure you're producing enough to be able to power the Pi consistently. So what does this tell us about each of the Pis? So the Pi Zero is great if you don't need the USB ports or Ethernet ports. It would be something that you would want to use as a temperature monitor. It doesn't consume a ton of power, but it can be a little slow to run. At only $10 a pop, that's pretty cheap, but you will have a supply constraint if you need to buy multiple of them. The Pi 3 Model A Plus uses less power than the B Plus and has really good thermal management. If you don't need the extra USB ports and Ethernet port, then it's a good option for you. The Pi 3 Model B Plus has all the bells and whistles and options that you could need, but it does consume the most power and does run the highest CPU temperatures. So the answer of which Pi you wanna buy totally depends on how you're gonna use it and what you need it for. So buy them all, buy multiple of all of them. Get a Pi collection. And those ladies and gentlemen are the facts. If you like this video, prove it. Click the like button, subscribe to our channel, Click the bell so you get notified. Share with your friends. Go in the comments below and let us know which Raspberry Pi is your favorite. Go on Twitter and let us know what projects you wanna see next. If you wanna build your own Pi Health dashboard and see how your Pi is doing, go to the link below in the description. And until next time, keep asking those hard-hitting questions.